over the last four months, prices have been all over the place for businesses. Mm. And businesses are experiencing, experiencing something they've never experienced. How can they um, set prices in an environment they've never gone through before? Yeah. This is actually a topic that I've been interested in for a long time. Pricing uh, is an undervalued discipline. Uh, it can make a huge difference in the success or failure of your business if it's done right. But there are surveys I've seen which say most company leaders actually don't think it's all that crucial. Of course, they know it's important but they undervalue its importance. It's worth remembering that um, Warren Buffett is a very aggressive pricer. You know, he owns all of these uh, uh, portfolio companies and he tends to leave the managers of those companies alone. That's why he likes those companies. He likes the managers, he lets them run their business, but he makes an exception when it comes to pricing. He often likes to be involved in their pricing decisions and the reason is he's afraid that the managers of the business will be too timid. He says for them, you know, if they set the price a little too low, it's no big problem. But if they set it a little too high, it could be a big, big problem. So they tend to be too timid. He comes in and pushes them to get the price higher than they want it to be. And generally that has turned out to be a good decision. Uh, the point here is that pricing experts say that in an, an environment like this, we should price with courage and with creativity. With courage, because the number one piece of advice they all give, and I've spoken to some of them just over the past week or two, the number one piece of advice they give is try to avoid cutting the price if you possibly can. You can work with the customer on all kinds of things, but please try not to cut the price. It is amazing how often managers, even experienced good managers, immediately think of pulling the price lever when a customer is hesitant to buy. They forget about all the other levers that they could pull. And the experts all say, please make price kind of the last lever you're going to pull. Uh, and it's it's visible now uh, in all kinds of ways. B2B, if that's your business, other things you can do besides lowering the price. Look, you can extend the payment terms. You can offer uh, the customer a shorter term contract if they're uncertain about the future or something. Uh, you can give them additional services if they're buying one of your products and you, they want help installing it or something like that. You can offer that. You can offer all kinds of things without cutting the price. Uh, in B2C commerce, we can see um, the same thing actually in the hotel industry. Uh, the Four Seasons Hotel chain is now offering customers uh, a third night or a fourth night free. Uh, the supposed room rate remains the same on the bill, but they're getting something extra. And by the way, it's exactly what they did in the downturn of 2008, 2009. Uh, Ritz Carlton instead is doing something where they say, yeah, come stay with us and we'll give you uh, a what they call a resort credit of $100 a day that you can spend on the restaurant or spa services or golf or whatever you want. Another way to give people something more without cutting the room rate. Now you hear this and you think, come on, is anybody really fooled? You know, you're getting more for a given price. Isn't it obvious that this is a price cut? Well, there really is a difference and it's important. Uh, in pricing theory, there's something they call the reference price, which is the lowest price the customer ever paid for whatever it is you're selling. They tend to remember it and they tend to compare all future transactions with it. One time add ons may be hard to remember or hard to value, but they will not forget the reference price. So if you ever cut that, they're going to remember it for a long, long time. That's why it's important trying to avoid cutting it. It's also good to remember that price cuts rarely pay for themselves. 
Uh, you cut the price 20%, you have to increase sales volume 25% just to hold revenue neutral. Highly unlikely in a downturn like this. And if a competitor matches your price cut, then where are you? You know, you're, you're guaranteed to lose. Um, it may be that holding the price steady will cost you less than lowering the price in the long term. Price cuts train customers to behave badly, right? Then they're always waiting for the next price cut. Uh, and it can even damage the brand. You know, a lot of what we think something is worth is uh, based on what we pay for it. If we pay less for it, we may subconsciously, but nonetheless, definitely think it's worth less. So there are all kinds of problems with cutting price. One final point. In this environment, this deep, deep downturn, you may have no choice. Ultimately, you may have no choice. You may have to cut price. I realize that. The one piece of advice that comes across on that is if you must ask, if you must cut price, ask for something in return. Ask if maybe they will extend their contract or expand the scope of their contract or renew sooner or something like that. The people you're selling to realize that you're running a business. They are inclined to go along with this. So if you have to cut price, ask for something.